March 2003. Now this month might not seem particularly significant to any American, but to Iraqis it marked the start of the war. A war that would go on for a decade and have lasting consequences 21 years later. My mom loves to remind me of that first week of the war, to motivate me to work stronger, remind me where my life started, and be grateful for where it is now. During that month, all my mother could hear was the horrifying sound of jet engines roaring while they unloaded bombs decimating entire communities. But amidst all that death and destruction, there was a breath of life. My mom was going into labor seven days after the war started. In that moment, all she could think of was her son's survival and how she was going to get to a hospital while the streets were being completely demolished. My dad, the strongest man I know, wasted no time. He knew he was risking his family's life, but he had no choice. He remained resilient, hid my brothers, grabbed my mom, and took off. It was his first time driving since the war started, driving through the rubble of his home and the remains of his neighbors. He couldn't look at the ice cream shop my mom loved going to or the park he loved playing soccer with my brothers in. As a responsibility of his family's life consumed his every thought. My mom says when I was born, all she could do was cry. Because the very first breath of air her child took weren't filled with joy and celebration, but poison, lead, white phosphorus, mercury, benzene, and so many others. My first memory was of my family hiding under a table during an airstrike, hearing every single missile and bomb, and feeling the ground tremble beneath us. You could hear the world around you crumble from the destruction of buildings to the faint sound of screaming. I still hear it. To calm me down during that difficult moment, my mom turned on the TV and One Piece was on, a show about fictional pirates liberating people from tyrannical rulers with their wacky powers. I remember laying there with my mom, with her trying to keep all my attention on the TV to drown out all the noise outside. And it worked. When I think back, what I remember most vividly is that show. I remember it as the very first time I watched One Piece, a show still in production that I tune in every Saturday to this day. Despite the horrors outside, I remain incredibly grateful for that memory and a slight reprieve that the show provided. A flicker of hope amongst the darkness of those war-torn days. I remember going on and on about the show to my best friend at the time, Shems. Shems translates to sun, a name fit for her beautiful, vibrant personality. She was my next door neighbor and she was always climbing over our fence, somehow convincing me to go outside and play with her. She was brave and fearless Nothing ever got in the way of her having fun. Not even a war. Until April 18, 2008. Shems was out grocery shopping with her aunt and grandma, but terrorists had planted a bomb at the entrance. And when they walked in, it was detonated. The blast took her grandmother's life, leaving only a finger. Imagine having to bury your own family member with only a finger in the casket put her aunt in a wheelchair, and it caused Shem's pain and suffering she did not deserve. She was just a little girl, but her life was stolen from her. During that time, my uncle was the only person who could get me to smile. God, I love that man. He would risk his life time and time again to see his nephews. It didn't matter if tanks were roaming the street. He didn't care if bombs were being dropped. If we called for him, he was there. I get told that I look like my uncle, and it makes me so proud. Seeing his face whenever I look in the mirror means everything to me. He was always bringing us snacks and junk food, even when he knew it would make my mom furious. On one of his trips, he was stopped at a checkpoint. 
one controlled by terrorists. No one in my family knows exactly what happened to him, but at that checkpoint, he was kidnapped. The next day, my grandparents received a letter demanding a $50,000 ransom for his life. My grandparents and my dad saved up what little money they had left and gave it to them, hoping to see their son and brother the next day. It never happened. My uncle was murdered. His, he was found disfigured with his head and body cut to pieces. He was only 20 years old, but his life, his future, everything he was meant to accomplish was stolen from him. My uncle was thrown in a mass grave with 20 other bodies. No burial, no ceremony denied the honor and respect that he so much deserved. After being accepted as an asylum seeker in the United States, I tried to forget everything. I wanted to forget everything. I wanted to start a second life that didn't involve all of my trauma of fresh start not bothered by the world and all the suffering that it caused me. I was silent, never telling anyone what I went through, and I stayed that way for years. I remember times where I'd be hanging out with friends, but I would have to walk away and cry, then pick myself back together and act as if nothing was wrong. I never shared my feelings or my experiences with anyone. I was alone. I didn't think anyone could understand me. But staying quiet accomplishes nothing. After my uncle passed away, I felt as if the lives of my family and everyone I cherished meant nothing. How did we deserve this? What did we do to deserve this? What did Shems do? Why did kids so full of life have to go through that? How is this justice? I hated the world and everything I ever put my family and friends through. I had no dreams. I didn't know what a dream felt like if I wasn't wishing to get out of that hellhole. And until moving to Arizona, I didn't know what a home felt like. Every day I think about the people I lost, the memory stuck in my head, the pain I felt, I remember it so vividly. I can't bring myself to forget. I don't want to forget. If I do, then I forget everyone I lost. And if I forget them, then what did they live for? What did they die for? I want to carry on their dreams and prove that their lives were not worthless. The longer I've lived here, the more I've realized I want to. No, I have to become a lawyer. I have to understand the system that has caused me and so many others pain and suffering. I'm not angry at any American. I have so many opportunities because of Americans. I have a home because of Americans. I recognize that the American soldiers and I had a lot in common. We were kids. Neither of us knew why this war was taking place. We were taken advantage of. I felt the sting of betrayal, the agony of loss, and the haunting memories of war. But amidst all that death, destruction, and despair, there is a glimmer of hope. Hope that one day I can make a difference. The haunting memories of war serve as a constant reminder of why I must persevere. I work tirelessly in school, but it's not about academic success. It's about understanding the system that perpetuates suffering and injustice. I refuse to be a bystander. I refuse to let other kids endure the same pain that I did. I may not be the smartest or the most talented, but I possess a tenacity that knows no bounds. My purpose goes deeper than personal gain. It's about seeking justice for the millions of lives cut short. Each accomplishment is not just my own, but a victory for those who can no longer fight. It's a victory for Shems, my uncle, and millions more. I refuse to let their sacrifices be in vain.